Click a man on payroll. Now, see, next time I'm bringing my cup. You definitely should. It has beauty chemistry on it. Just, <sighs> just saying. All right, we ready for take two? Bang. All right, man. What's up, everybody, man? Thanks so much for tuning in to the What You Mean podcast. This is our first pilot episode, man. I'm your boy, Chestin. And I'm your co-host, Kim. Yeah, I call her D. MUA, man, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and we're going to get to the get to, rest assured, but real quick, man, um, some people help make this possible to get this podcast in the studio off the ground, man. So I want to shout them out real quick. They are official sponsors of my studio for the year of 2022. So I want to shout out real quick to Stebo. Um, it stands for security technology. The E is something, the B is something, the O is something. That boy, it, he do a whole lot of stuff, but he did do the electricity inside of our studio, man. So shout out to Stebo. Come on, Mr. Do It All. And then we got our Dwayne Worthy of Trustworthy Woodworks. This guy is a beast with a hammer and a nail and a saw. So he do a lot of woodwork. So if you want an heirloom piece that's going to stay in your family for years to come, he's definitely the guy to uh, holler at. And if you need any work inside of your crib, you know what I'm saying, he can do that too, man. So uh, thank you, Wayne. Uh, Next up, we got uh, Carmen Fagan of... Elite Taxes and Notary Services, man. She is a bomb accountant. She definitely reached out and I uh, helped the studio out. She was our one sponsor that we had, you know what I'm saying? She came through in the clutch. The good Lord must have laid something on that girl heart because he just came through in the clutch. And then, of course, man, shout out to that boy and the sponsor, DJ Dirty Vegas. He's going to be doing the drops for the podcast. So you're going to get the chance to hear that boy in the beginning, in the end. And I'm trying to see, can I get him to do some special effects, like his laugh or something like that? So we got something to cue, you know what I'm saying, when people say crazy stuff outside of what you mean. So shout out to DJ Dirty Vegas. And last but definitely not least, I want to give a shout out to Marquita Raglan of Right On Cue Designs. Uh, y'all see this cup right here? You know what I'm saying? She did that. This is my cup. That's what she does. You know what I'm saying? She do shirts, uh, everything that you see, the pick visuals for a long, long time of my life starting out. She made that happen. So you can reach her on Facebook. So definitely make sure to uh, reach out and I'll get y'all some design cups or whatever you want to do. She can make whatever you want. Uh, last but not least, special shout out in recognition to Bo. We call him Deal. Garvin, um, he did a lot of the work in the studio as well mm-hmm. to make sure that this podcast was ready up and running. And uh, Cedric Hardy, man, I got to give him a shout out as a dope chef because he's the cook for our sip and shoot events that we have here at the studio. But he was also one of the people who came here and did a lot of work inside of the studio. So shout out to him. You know what I'm saying? Uh, with that being said, the most important person that came through in the clutch drove all the way from the A, but came in like Kobe, like Swiss. You know Listen, what I'm saying? The greatest. Shout out to my daddy though my daddy. <laughs> mr otis green yes. man he came though. through and uh fixed some stuff inside of the podcast studio that i did not want y'all to see no uh eventually <laughs> you will get to see the video when you get to see like what the window looked like beforehand and uh him working on it and it, it'll be in the video when we see the the beginning stages of what the pick visuals look like at the beginning before it became the pick visual studios you know what i'm saying so uh, with that being said, man, we're going to go ahead and roll that intro, man. Bam. All right, man. So, of course, we're going to do we're going to do ladies first. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we, 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 we're kind of sort of going to introduce ourselves to you guys and kind of sort of let you know what we do, what our field is, you know, uh, kind of sort of how we got started, you know, give you some pointers here or there or try to give some type of advice, you know, based on, you know, our experiences. We, we can't say the word whether we right or wrong, you know what I'm saying, but we can tell you what didn't work or work for us. So we just going to give you all a little background on us, and I'm going to be a gentleman and let the MUA go ahead and go first. So, BB, so yeah, like I said, oh, God, I was about to say lady. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, y'all, my name is Kim. I am a professional makeup artist and the owner of Beauty Chemistry, located here in Birmingham, Alabama. And I've been a makeup artist for 10 years now. My specialty is weddings and doing, like, bridal makeup, red carpet glam, soft glam, and also teaching as well. So that's what I specialize in. So if you're needing your makeup done, 
holla at your girl. I got you. I got you. That's what's up, man. I would tell my boy to cue the hand clap. You know what I'm saying? But we ain't got him advanced enough to be doing all of that. But real quick, you know what I'm saying? Before I do my little introduction, man, I want to give a shout out to my homeboy since 1998. My homeboy, D. Rogers. He in the booth running this thing for us right now, man, making sure that we can get this first live broadcast to y'all, man. So shout out to him. So my name is LaChester, man. I'm the owner of Pick Visual Studios, man. Um, shout out to Kim and thank her so much for taking me up on the opportunity to come in here and make this place a home and a content creating spot. Uh, so I'm an all-around photographer, man. I'm, I'm really, I'm, I say general, you know what I'm saying? Because I don't really want to put myself in a box or a can saying that I'm only going to do this type of thing. Kim did ask me the question a little while ago, like, what would you say your specialty is? And I told her, I really don't know. But if I had to make a choice on the type of photography that I prefer to do, it's definitely outside photography. Like, that's my thing. But uh, I'm a writer, man. I'm a composer. And when I say composer, I don't mean music. I mean creative um, creative art with being behind the lens. Um, you know, I've done some small projects with writings and music videos and different things of that nature. So that's kind of sort of me in a nutshell. I like to have a good time. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we do have events here, man. If you haven't been to one, you definitely need to check that out. We got one coming up soon. Hey. Uh, so uh, Kim's going to be doing some makeup, man. She got a special going for y'all, so you better hop on that because she only can take a couple of people that night, you know what I'm saying, because of how long the ev event is. Uh, so uh, definitely get in her DMs if you're trying to get your makeup done if, if you're coming. So that's who I am, man. And um, I just want to go ahead and ask, like, real quick, you know what I'm saying, so we can keep rolling and keep it going. Like, if you had to, like, kind of sort of, like, say what inspired you to be who you are or to, you know, um, to create beauty chemistry, like, what, what would you say got you there? Oh, that's a good question. So... For me, when I first started doing makeup, like I said, I've been doing makeup for 10 years now. The The industry was completely different from what it is now. You know, like, it's, I won't say it's saturated, but there's just so many options. And what I've found over the years is that women have become really intimidated by just approaching makeup, you know, and just going into Sephora, going into Ulta, and they're like, I don't even know where to start. This is just overwhelming. Right, right, right. You know. And so for me, um, I really started beauty chemistry because I wanted to meet everyday women just where they are, you know, just b basically helping them define and set their own beauty standards that aren't based off of social media and um, celebrities and just other other people or anything. Right, right. So that's pretty much in a nutshell just what I like focus on and what I help them do, you know, and um, really just cultivate what works for them. So they and it fits their lifestyle and what they have going on and they don't feel overwhelmed like oh my gosh so I have to spend three hours in the in the mirror no girl you can spend five <laughs> <You laughs> that's can spend what's up five or ten and go about your business you know so can I tell the story that I was told on on the podcast go, go ahead go ahead so 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 this is this is this is what I heard from the grapevine <laughs> I you know I told y'all that. You know, um, Kim put in a call to her dad. Um, I, you know, sent him a video of what the podcast window looked like, and I just ultimately did not like the way that it looked. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, he put in a phone call, called back and was like, hey, baby, uh, I, I, I'll be dying there tomorrow, you know, in a couple of hours. You know I'm what I'm afraid, saying? Yeah. And I'm talking about uh, he, she called, <laughs> and he came, like, the next day, all the way from Atlanta to do basically a 30-minute job for me. You know what I'm saying? And he was cutting, measuring, knocking it out. I mean, getting it on, on the first dot. And this is what he told me. Because we sent Kim on a little errand to go to Home Depot and, and get some more some old wood for us because we had mismeasured some stuff. And I was like, you know, he was like, don't 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 you go. We're just going to send Kim so we can keep working while she's gone. Because he wanted to get back to the crib. I understand he had to work the next day, whatever the case may be. They sent me on a whole excursion. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about that right now. But Bro, we um, sent her yeah. with barcodes. We sent her with barcodes and pictures. It, it was not that hard to figure out what she needed to be getting, what she needed to be doing. That wasn't but, a problem, but anyway. All right, so so this is what Mr. Green told me while she was gone. He was like, man, I knew that my daughter was destined to be in the line of, you know, makeup, you know, cosmetic, skincare, and things like that. He was like, man, I remember one night I woke up, and it was like 1 or 2 in the morning, and he was like, my baby was sitting down at the foot of the bed and was in all her mama makeup, you know what I'm saying? And he just, he said all he could do was laugh and pick up and be like, you can't be doing this, and took her to bed. So I think that, you know, if you grab a hold of something like that at that age, you know what I'm saying, and regardless of 
what you're looking at throughout the time of, of when you get to the point where you're at now, you know what I'm saying, where you're starting to expound on what you really love and your passion, you know what I'm saying, and focusing on it. Like, if you start that early, like, it's something special about it, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, you didn't, you know, you your story is probably a lot similar to mine because I always wanted to get into photography, but the one thing that I didn't want to do was spend the money and, and, and do learn the craft of getting into it. I just wanted the end result. I didn't want to go through all the steps to get there. I just wanted to be, the hey, pick a camera up and, and, you know, if you taking, you know, if your camera on the A, you won't, you ain't no photographer, bro. Like, you just, you just, you just skating and making it through right now. So, <laughs> you know, that's pretty, that's, that's pretty much that, man. So, you know, when we think about our dreams and aspirations, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, with the direction that we going in right now, you know what I'm saying? Because I know you asked me about, okay, you know, are you going to try to do some classes or some camps or something in the summer to kind of sort of help the kids in the community that want to learn about, you know, photography, that want to learn about videography or learn about podcasting and stuff like that. And I'm definitely going to come back to it and talk about it. But I want to pose the same question to you. Like, is that something that you also thought about doing, you know what I'm saying, as far as helping the community of Birmingham, like bringing some young ladies at the high school level or middle school level and, you know, talk to them about beauty, the skin that they're actually in and being comfortable on, their, on, on the, with, the, with, the, with their sales? Oh, yeah. Uh, funny you actually asked because I'm working with an organization tomorrow called My Sister's Closet, um, and they're in partnership with the YWCA. Right. So um, what they're having tomorrow is like a prom event. So they're going to have um, different vendors there, and they're going to be able to, like, shop shop the different vendors and, like, pick out their prom dresses, their shoes and accessories. So my whole purpose of being there is to really just help them figure out what type of look that they have, and then I'm also raffling off um, – Basic, um, I'm raffling off two services for the young ladies that will be there tomorrow. But I'm mm-hmm. definitely um, a very big advocate about doing that because self-esteem now with teenagers, preteens, like, it's it's super imperative, you know. And if you don't figure that out now mm-hmm. at 12, 13, 14 years old, you know, um, and you, like I said earlier, if you're not confident in who you are and you haven't, identified what your own beauty standard is, right. people will tell you. Right, right, right. You know, and that starts at a really pivotal age. So I'm definitely big about doing that, absolutely. That's what's up, man. I know, like I said, you <laughs> posed that question to me, and it made me think, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. like what I want to do or how I want to do. And, I, you know, I was different growing up, you know what I'm saying? Like, Same. you know, shout out to my uncle, rest in peace. You know, my uncle Bay used to always, you know, he didn't mind supporting me or giving me what I wanted ever, you know what I'm saying? But he never just handed it to me. Right. He was always like, you want $20? Okay, cool. I need you to come over here and grab this lawnmower and, and mow my lawn. You know right. what I'm saying? You want $25? Okay, I need you to come over here and wash my car. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I, I learned to work, you know what I'm saying, at an early age, you know what I'm saying? So, one thing that I've long learned in the entrepreneur world is in order to get where you want to go, you have to work just a little bit harder than the normal person. You know what I'm saying? And that doesn't always mean that you're going to get paid for what you do. No. You have to understand the nature of I'm going to do something for the experience and learning something so that it'll help me hone my craft and move forward. Right. So I know that that's an uphill battle with what I'm doing because I know a lot of people that have been doing this longer than me, you know what I'm saying? And they may not even be on the level that I am, but they've been doing it longer than me. And, you know, if I pick the phone up or I text and say, hey, this is what I got going on, the first thing that we're talking about is money, you right. know what I'm saying? Which right. I understand because when, even when I started out, you know what I'm saying, thank God for my mentor – my mentor, Frederick Powell, you know, he, he had me suited and booted. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. he wasn't finna pay me top dollar when he when he knew that the knowledge he was giving me was worth way more than what he could actually pay me. And I understood that. That's why he could always call me and I would always go. I'm saying all that to come back to how I want to set stuff up when it comes to, like, an internship here in the studio. Like, mm-hmm. I want somebody that's interested in the craft, you know right. what I'm saying, that they want to learn how to do it so they can take the craft and use that to generate a different stream of revenue for themselves. Right. And in my particular little world, it's kind of hard to bump into them kind of people. So with that being said, I'm going to put something out there. Like, you know, right now we have an intern position out there. We have two of them that's open. It's posted on handshake.com for Miles College and, and UAB, you know what I'm saying, for two people in arts or communication that need to learn about switchers, you know what I'm saying, need to learn about sound, need to learn about how different things work. Like, I know a, enough about it to give you a probably a little bit more than what you have right now. Right. So I definitely want to do some mentoring. I definitely want to do some intern stuff 
stuff. And I think we are bitches going to get there definitely before oh, the yeah. year is out. But, right, you know, right now our focus is just getting everything up and running inside our studio the exact way that we want it. You know what I'm saying? Hello. So. With that being said, you know what I'm saying? Like, what is, like, some overall goals in, like, 2022 that you see for yourself as far as beauty chemistry goes in conjunction with La Pic Visual Studios? And the only reason I'm saying that and asking you that is because of this reason right here. I know that me, I'm trying to add titles to you every time that I get a you chance. You so lie. One in particular, <laughs> I definitely want you to be a content creator mm -hmm. and be able to create content. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, there's a difference. You know what I'm saying? True. So... Uh, a content creator means that you're creating content all the time. But to, in order to create content, that means you're creating it for somebody else. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So the people who come through the door, I want you to be able to give them, you know, uh, creative direction and, and give them um, advice or give them um, an opportunity or show them something that I probably didn't see or they seen themselves. So with all that being said, like, what are you, what are you trying to do in, like, 2022 for a goal-wise? Like, what do you see yourself? Like, what are we doing? I can definitely say I feel like you have pushed me outside my comfort zone just okay. in these last couple of months because, like I said, I know what my niche is just as an artist. And that's why I asked you a few weeks ago, like, what do you specialize in? Right. You know, because I know me, like, I'm not a an high, a high fashion makeup artist. Like, that's, that's, not my, that's not my forte. That's not my specialty. Even, like, special effects. That's not my forte. That's not my specialty. I know people who are excellent at it. That's right. just not my lane. Right. You know, so some of the shoots that we've done, I'm like, okay, I have to push myself out of my comfort zone. Like, I can't just do, you know, this over here. I have to think a little. That it's really, like, forced me to switch my gears. So for right. me, um, that's definitely one big goal for me, really, like, challenging and honing in differently with my artistry. You gotcha. know what I'm saying? Like, because, like I said, I've been doing this for a for a long time. So, for me now, like, educating, education and just further, um, just sharpening my skills, sharpening my brushes, rather. Gotcha, <laughs> that's, gotcha. That's a really big goal for me, aside from just general growth. You know what I mean? Gotcha, 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 gotcha. So, um, y'all can probably kind of sort of tell this is our first time sitting in this room sure together. Is. If you're watching on YouTube or if, even if you're listening to your car right now. And uh, we're trying to not be like script people. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to keep looking down at a piece of paper. But for the sake of having some type of structure through our podcast tonight, we are definitely have something in front of us to kind of sort of just give us a direction to go. We're trying to keep it a buck over here, though. We're going to get to a point where we're just going to come in here, have some drinks, talk. And, and, and just and just keep it real. But we're just kind of sort of trying to give y'all a sense of who we are in the direction that we're going with, you know, our entrepreneurship as well as the things that we're trying to do here inside of the actual studio. So um, with that being said, man, let's go ahead and I'll shift gears one more time, man. Like um, when it comes to being an entrepreneur and it comes to, you know, running a business, like if you had to give – a 19 year old mm. advice on starting mm. their own business, what would you tell them? Oh, that's mm. Mm. Ooh, Lord Jesus. Um, shut up and listen. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I'm being, I'm being so serious because a lot of times like you, you, you can have the skill, but if you don't have the experience, right. And you're trying to tell someone who has, Years of experience, how to do something. So wait a minute, hold up. You you hadn't walked that path yet. Calm calm down. Right. Humble thyself. Right. You know, do your research. Do your research. You know, and don't be big enough, or don't think that you're too big to have someone help you. Let someone help you. Right. right. You know what I mean? Like just take take classes, educate yourself. You know, really understand um, what you're getting into before you do it. Cause I hear so many makeup artists. I've heard talked to plenty of them that have been like, "Oh well, I post all the time, and I'm not viral on Instagram." Girl, you just got started. Man, look, <laughs> like, I can tell you about it. Look, look, look. That's a whole nother. <laughs> that's a whole nother story in itself. Talking about trying Excuse to go me. viral and them likes and what you're doing and not doing when it comes to social media. And you know what? We actually got a guest coming up uh, for our episode number two. So if you know Shanisha Howard, man, she has her own social media company that she's branding and she's getting out there. She is going to be our guest um, 
um, actually uh, coming up on our next episode, episode hey. number two, man. So, if, again, man, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're looking at us on YouTube, man, and then make sure that you are following us on whatever platform that you listen to your podcast on. Uh, I think the reason why I asked about advice again, you know what I'm saying? I asked that question to kind of put it on the table for me and you to, to discuss is because uh, some of y'all have already checked out the podcast that I put out there. And pretty much I had to establish an RSS speed for our podcast because I wanted to be already set up in, on every major platform. So when we did our first episode and I submitted, we ain't got to wait 24 to 72 hours to get our stuff out there. So that first episode that I submitted was actually with my homegirl, Corinne Williams. And one of the things that we actually talked about was, you know what I'm saying, dating an entrepreneur. It was like an 18-point thing on dating an entrepreneur. And we made it through like one through nine. And she's actually going to go ahead and schedule to come back with us. And you'll be in at that time, you know what I'm saying. And we're going to sit down and cover those next nine points about dating an entrepreneur. Uh, with that being said, like... <laughs> Come on with it. I want to come to this question that you asked about because you stay on me about this. You know what I'm saying? And anybody that know me be on it about it. I'm maybe kidding. maybe even my homeboy sitting in the engineer, engineering room will understand why I am the way that I am now. You know what I'm saying? And it might be the reason why I'm single right now. This is what you asked me. You said, what, said. what advice or, or what kind of direction can you give somebody when it comes to balancing your work life and your personal life? And I have no balance when it comes to that. So I ain't got no dog in that fight. I'm all work. I play a little bit when I get the opportunity to or try to get some sleep, but I'm all, all work. So I don't have any balance. So I'm going to put that ball in your court, and I'm going to let you talk about that a little bit. You know what I'm saying? And, I mean, and I mean, what you mean? I what mean, you mean, what you mean, what I mean? What you like, because I mean exactly what I'm saying. Like, because, dude. All right, so 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 let's let's do this. Do you feel like you have some type of balance when it comes to your work life and your personal life? For the most part, I feel like I do, but I'm still navigating through it. Like right, it's, it's still sticky now. Like, oh, don't get it twisted. This, yeah, some days it ain't cute at all. Gotcha. But but for the most part, I do, and I feel like for me, um, it really kind of goes back to sometimes being like, no, that doesn't work for me. Gotcha. You know, like does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, just. Creating back, I don't say balance, creating boundaries for my for myself. Gotcha. And just with other people, and just learning when to walk away from certain things, or just be like, okay, I work from six a.m. <coughs> to seven p.m. Right. Like so, you like you know, I have two phones. Right. Or whatever. I don't answer my other phone after seven at all. Like you uh, call me, I don't do that. You no, like but but seriously though, like if you if you call me, text me. You're emailing me about your appointment or whatever. Like, I love you, girl, but I will get back to you about it tomorrow. Unless it's, like, a serious thing. Right, right, right. You know, like, you're like, oh, my gosh, well, whatever. Like, I understand that. But for the most part, because I, <laughs> I need to recharge for myself. Gotcha, you gotcha. Know? So, and I have to reset. And I feel like if I don't do that for myself, then I'm constantly worrying about, oh, well, this didn't get done, that didn't get, that didn't get done, or whatever the case may be. And I'm like, no, you can give yourself some grace. And that might be my problem. I don't ever really turn it off. You know what I'm saying? Like, my business phone ringing at, now that I'm single again, like, my business phone literally ringing at 9, 9.30, 10, 10.30, sometimes 11 o'clock. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. and depending on, like you said, who it is and what they're calling about, you know what I'm saying? I probably nine times out of 10, I pick up the phone and talk to my client. Mm -hmm. Um but that has worked to my advantage in, in some sense, you know what I'm saying, especially when it comes to booking weddings. Yeah. Like, a lot of weddings that I've booked is because the bride and the groom, they can contact me and ask questions and get a sense of comfort from me in terms of what they're wanting and what they're doing. And I'm not saying that that's something that's going to always be able to do, you know what I'm saying, because I know some other photographers that are making bank on wedding, and they don't do that. Like, you might get his assistant. Or her assistant, you know what I'm right. saying? You might hear from them maybe once or twice beforehand, but you're definitely not getting the conversation or communication that I give my clients, and I give it to all my clients. And that might be why I don't have any balance, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? But I think that's going to come with the growth of my company as well. True. I feel like when I start getting people through the door, that's not trying to automatically come in here and be like, hey, what you paying, you know what I'm saying? And they come in, and they kind of sort of earn their stripes and earn their ways, you know what I'm saying? And then we build as a group and we build as a team and my homeboy Carlos always say 
when you get a team, you in the game because everybody need to understand it's enough money to go around. That is true. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. if, if you see the vision that I have and what I'm doing and the direction I'm going in, mm-hmm. like, why would you not want to jump on board? Because if I get paid, if I get a check, then you really going to want to be involved. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So why don't you go ahead and become part of that now? And I think that just because I demand perfection with everything that I touch and everything that I do, mm-hmm. that's kind of sort of why I ain't got no balance. You know what I'm saying? But even still, like when you think about like major corporations, like I'll say Saks or just, you know, a, a bank or whatever right. the case may be, they there's still boundaries and parameters. You can't go shop at Walmart or Target after 10 p.m. Why? Because there's parameters and there's boundaries. They are operating from 10 a.m. or 8 a.m. I should know because I'm a frequent Target shopper. But <laughs> but Target high as hell, man. No, they're not. You crazy, What you're not going to do is come for Target. Bro, I like Target, but I'm up. Uh, yeah, I, 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 we ain't got no beat button. I'm trying to cuss. I'm, about to, <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. We ain't got no beat button yet. <laughs> but but they, they only operate from 8 a.m. until 10 p.m. Right. So you can't sit here and try to go shop with, shop with them at 1030 in the evening. They're going to be like, uh, ma'am, like, we're closed. Like, I'm, I'm, so, I'm so sorry, but, but we're not available for you at this present moment right now. You know what I'm saying? So right, to me, right, I right. feel like if major corporations implement those same perimeters and those same boundaries within their business, mm-hmm. as a small business owner, you should do the same thing. Gotcha. Because if not, people will try to run things for you. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Yeah, um, I feel like um, we need to go ahead and uh, – as much as I'm enjoying this, bring it to a wrap, man. Because of the simple fact, y'all, that, again, this is our first podcast. I think that it's been awesome. I think that we, we've done awesome. But I made a small error. I brought everybody in that's on the team tonight making this thing work and told them to cut their phones off. And I know that y'all hear that ringing in the background because guess who alarm that is? The person who told everybody to cut their phone off. And I hate bad audio, man. So real quick, man, I want to thank everybody for listening, for checking us out, our first podcast. We got more content coming. We got guests coming. We got realtors coming. We got people that are going to talk to us about uh, hypnotherapy coming. Coming. We got people that are going to come and talk to us about skincare and waxing. We got we got some guests coming for y'all, man. So subscribe, man. Check us out. We got a lot of good stuff coming for y'all, man. Thank y'all so much for listening. Uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure that you follow us on all the social media platforms, man. And uh, because we are on everything, man. We're on Twitter. We're on Instagram. Pinterest. Uh, we're on Pinterest. We just got our Patreon approved. So we're going to be able to push content and push also uh, merchandise to you guys, man. So when we get all of that stuff, man, we just really want y'all to support the movement, man. Like I said, we are a small Alabama-based podcast, but we mm-hmm. get in the podcast world to make some noise. I promise y'all, I got a whole bunch of funk coming for y'all. Like, and another thing. Kim is our co-host. She's officially my co-host. But I do have a segment that she don't want no parts of that y'all probably not going to see her on it that much. Sorry, y'all. So what we're going to be doing <laughs> here on the What You Mean podcast, we got three different segments. We got the What's New segment where we pretty much bring in somebody to kind of sort of talk about the trends that are going on. And probably they got a social media present. You know what I'm saying? We're going to try to build ourselves up so we can bring some five guests in. And then we got uh, a subject where we do Industry Mondays on Mondays where we drink, bring in another entrepreneur that's doing something in the community of Birmingham and around, around you know, the city or whatever the case may be. And then for everybody else, it's your boy. I got the after hour set it going down and the after hour set because if you don't watch nothing else, you know what I'm talking about. I'm going to give you some clickbait because it's going to go down. I got models, Instagram models. I got guys that are running uh, agencies coming in here and we're going to turn up. We're going to take us some shots. We're going to have us some drinks. We're going to talk crazy. And at the end of the day, man, I keep trying to tell Kim that sex sale, man, we're going to talk about it, folks. So if you ain't doing nothing, make sure you Make sure you bumping with us. Again, we got three different segments, man. We not letting nobody put us in no box. I'm bumping in the bed. That's all. You what? Nah. 
Carry on. What you mean? What you mean? <laughs> Look, man, we got content coming from all different corners. Again, it's always a friendly conversation, man. If you're an adult, man, you know that sex, intimacy, uh, all that good stuff is, is just part of life. Relationships, that's what a lot of people talk about in their podcast platforms. Number one, because it sells. You know what I'm saying? It brings you to that platform to check them out. So, again, thanks so much for listening. Thanks so much for tuning in, man. And uh, from me, I'm going to say goodbye, man, until next time. And from... Moi. See y'all next time, man. Peace out. Thanks y'all so much. <laughs>